Hello, everybody out there. <clears throat> this is the tittle of the day for today. And um, it's cold here. It's snowy. And, um, it's you know, I mean, usually it doesn't snow this much in Texas, and it's snowing pretty good. Uh, I got my hot cocoa. And um, <laughs> and later on, um, after this video, I'm going to make uh, an, an in, in context uh, study video about um, snow because it's snowing here, right? So I decided, well, since I'm kind of here, that I would uh, make a video about it. And it's, it was interesting, once I put it all together, about snow and how God explains it, and it even relates to the end times and things like that. So after this video, it should be up maybe tonight or um, in the morning, depending on how long it takes to process it. Um, but today, right now, what I want to talk about is, um, um, I, just, I got this the other day, and it made a lot of sense. And I don't know why I ever... I didn't ever think about it like this before, but I did. So, um, <clears throat> about okay. So first, let's talk about how um, it's basically about how Satan and demons um, influence you and control you. Okay. Now, first, let me say that um, as Christians, I believe that Satan and demons cannot possess you because you were actually possessed by the Holy Ghost, right? You have the Holy Ghost in you, so they can't possess you, um, but they can influence you to do things. Um, and non-believers, uh, you know, that don't believe in Jesus, who don't have the Holy Ghost, those are the people who Satan can possess, okay, and, and um, who um, uh, the demons can possess, all right, and you can see that in Scripture, um, you know, I mean, even Judas, and we don't know if Judas believed or Judas didn't believe, but um, Satan possessed him, so I would think that he wasn't believing in Christ until after Christ had risen and all that, because it was after that that Judas killed himself, right? So, um, uh, you can see through Scripture that all the people who Jesus cast demons out of, and, and Paul and Peter and all of them, they were non-believers, okay? And then later on, they became believers after the demons were gone. And we can see that in Scripture, too. So, in James 1, uh, 12 through 16, this is saying that uh, demons cannot and Satan cannot possess, but they can influence, okay? Because it, James is basically going to tell us that um, it's us, that when we give in to the sin, it's our own lust that makes us do the things, that we do it, okay? But but the demons like it when we do it. Non-believers, the demons love it when you give in to lust because it's them fulfilling their desires through you, okay? As as uh, believers, they still like it because they, in some way, can participate, okay? It's crazy, but that's true, okay, spiritually wise. So let's listen to what James says, James 1, 12 through 16. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. So see, God's not tempting you with the evil. Uh, Satan is tempting you, and the demons are tempting you with the evil. Um, but you notice here, James is speaking to believers, okay? He's speaking to believers. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and in his own lust enticed then when lust hath conceived it bringeth forth sin and sin when it is finished bringeth forth death do not err my beloved brethren okay so you see don't be in error okay so don't give in to the temptation that's why in the lord's prayer it says uh, deliver uh, lead me not into temptation right it doesn't say you know uh uh, never let me be tempted or it says lead me not in temptation because the te temptation is going to come it even came to Jesus right and it says that in Luke 4 if you read it says that you know Jesus passed all the temptations the test but then it said Satan left him for a season okay so what was that saying Satan's going to come back after the season and try to tempt him again okay so <clears throat> and that's what happens with all of us okay it's, it's best that we don't give in to the temptations in the tests, but if we do give in to them, then we know um, as believers it's because of our own lust. That's what he says um, uh, in verse 14. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Okay, so he's being enticed by Satan and by the demons, but you have to give in to it as a believer. Okay, now as unbelievers, it's literally... Um, Satan and the demons that are making you do the things that you're doing, okay? Um, whether you believe that or not, I mean, the scripture says it, okay? So let's listen to this right here. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 1 through 4 says this. 4. 
Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. Okay, the hidden things of dishonesty, okay? We, as he's speaking here, believers, we uh, faint not, uh, you know, we give in not. Okay, because we know that that's what we're dealing with. It's not hidden to us anymore because we know, because the Word of God tells us, the Holy Ghost tells us, okay? But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Okay, so it's hid to them that are lost. So they don't understand and see that it's the Satan and the demons that are making them do the things that they're doing. Okay, remember that. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Okay, so you see, that's what he's saying. He's saying that the gospel is hidden to them. They don't understand. It's, it's hidden to them that are lost. They don't understand what's influencing them. Okay? Um, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Okay, so he's blinded their minds. Satan is in them, possessing them, blinding their minds. Okay, so you see that? Um... Okay, so I just want to say that first so that we don't have any of that confused. Now, uh, when you do something sinful <clears throat> and you cannot figure out why you are doing it, okay, it is because Satan and demons through sin are controlling you to do it, okay? As a non-believer, they're controlling you literally. They could be inside of you, possessing you. As, non as believers, they are influencing you to do these things. And sometimes you don't even know why. You're just like, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? I, I know better than to do this. And then especially afterwards, you're like, man, I knew better to do that. Why did I do that? Well, you did it because the demons and Satan were influencing you to do it, okay? And that's just the truth. And we can see that. Well, I'm going to play all of Romans 7 because that's what going to talk about. And I'll talk about it in between there. But let's listen to this. Romans 7. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth? For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. So Jesus loosened us from that. That's basically what he's saying here. You know, and a lot of people will twist that and say, See, you're bound by the law forever, right? But he's saying <laughs> that if the one husband got the father, you know, like if one husband dies and what Jesus died for is he's a bride and bridegroom and all that kind of stuff. But that's another study, but here. So then if, while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins which were by the law did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. And what? Beforehand, Satan had the keys to death in Hades, right? And then Jesus took the keys to death in Hades. And it, so it's very interesting here that that's what he's saying. Your members, you, you, you were the sin, the demons and the Satan were influencing you and possessing you at times to do these things, influencing your flesh and your members um, because they wanted you to go to death. Because like Satan wants people to go to hell where he has to go and be tortured or where, the way he's going to be tortured, right? Because he feels like he can, um, you know, hurt God in that way. But he can't get to God, so he tries to get to God through us, his children. That's why he crucified Jesus. That's why he had all that influence to crucify Jesus is because he thought, ha, 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 even if he is the son of God, I'm going to hurt the father by hurting uh, his son, not knowing that he was playing right into the plan, right? Okay. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Okay. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. Okay, and that's why... <clears throat> 
I, I believe you need the whole Bible, okay? You need to understand what all of it means, okay? And and like I've said before, you don't you can't follow the whole law. It's impossible. Only Jesus could, okay? Now there's little things that you can do if you choose to, you know, and and that's fine. Um, but you you can't do it by works. You can't do it by the law. You can't follow it and 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 be righteous, okay? Only Jesus' righteousness on us, you know, is what God sees. But that's why a lot of New Testament churches are really being influenced by Satan because they throw the whole Old Testament out completely, which is just ridiculous, okay? It's teaching. The Torah is teaching. The New Testament is Torah teaching. It's all teaching. It's God's teaching, So or the Father. So we need to understand all of it. Now, when they want to throw it out, why? Because you don't know what sin is and what kind of sins you're committing if you don't understand the law. Because, like, that's what he's saying here. I would have never known that, you know, what lust was unless I read Thou shalt not covet. And then it's like, oh, okay, I understand. I shouldn't sleep with my neighbor's wife, okay? But if you didn't know that that's what the law said and that was sinful and you went ahead and did it, how are you going to know it's sin? You're not, unless you know the law. Like I've said before, the law is like a mirror. You look into the mirror and you see you got a dirty face, but the mirror doesn't clean your face. The the rag, the white rag, cleans your face, which is Jesus. Okay, so like you need Jesus. Um, but you see what I'm saying? The the Satan wants to deceive you to tell you you don't need the Old Testament though, because he doesn't want you to know like if you're going down a bad path that will make your life destructive. Okay. But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law, sin was dead. For I was alive without the law once. But when the commandment came, sin revived, and I died. And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. Amen. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin, that it might appear sin working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. Okay, so you know For what it is. It's them influencing you. It's sinful. It became very sinful to you. You understand it. Oh, okay, they're influencing me to try to do these things, and, and I don't need to give in to it. I need to persevere and, and, you know, repent and get through these things. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. Hmm. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. So he said, you know, sometimes I want to do what is right, but for some reason I do the sinful thing, I do the wrong thing, I do the destructive thing for my life, and I don't even know why I do that. I just end up doing it because it's being influenced by Satan and demons, and to unbelievers they're being possessed by them. Now then, it is no more I that do See, it, no more I but that do sin it. that dwelleth in me. Okay. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. Right. For the good that I would I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. So see, it's the sin. And where does the sin come from? From the, the, the beginner of sin, Satan, okay? The, the devil, the serpent, okay? He was the beginning of sin, right? So he is the one who is sin, okay? And he is leading your flesh to try to do these things. It's crazy. And, and like he says, it, you know, I can't do anything of myself because there's no good in my flesh. That's why you need the Holy Ghost to lead you to do what is good. <laughs> oh, man, I pushed the wrong button. <laughs> Hold on. But sin, that it might appear sin working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Back For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that I do I Lord not. But again. what I hate, <laughs> that do I. 
If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. So you have the law, the teaching of the Holy Ghost teaching you what to do spiritually. But then you have the law of Satan. Alistair Crawley, do that what thy will shall be the whole of the law. You have that law of Satan's law trying to get you to go this other way, to take you into captivity, you see? So um, it's like you have these two laws and your members going back and forth, and you choose, you know, which one you want to go most of the time, unless you're an unbeliever and then you're possessed, so you ain't got no choice. They just take you over, and it's, I mean, very interesting. Listen to what Paul says. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Only Jesus. <laughs> so then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. So the law of God is the Holy Ghost teaching you. Law means Torah, right? Torah means teaching, instructions. And who did Jesus say was going to teach us? The Holy Ghost. So the law of God is the Holy Ghost teaching, okay? And the law of sin is Alistair Crowley, that kind of crap, right? Okay. And why do you think he called it the book of the law? Okay, that makes complete sense when you read Romans 7. Paul warned us about the book of the law from Aleister Crowley, the beast, and all that stuff. All right, so um, also let's look at 1 Corinthians 10, 9 through 13, which speaks kind of about this. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Okay, so what happened? The serpents came and bit them and destroyed them, okay? Right? Because why? They were sinful. So you think God didn't just put made it a serpent for no good reason? Well, this is like to show them, well, you're being demonically and satanically influenced here. Okay, and it's destroying your life. It's going to kill you, and many of them did die, right? And the same thing, who's the destroyer? Satan, the Antichrist, right? Okay, he's the destroyer, a bat on. Okay, so you see here Paul's explaining, like, these are the influences and, and the possessions that come and do. These are the entities that do this to you. Now all these things happened unto them for ensamples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Okay, so see, all that happened so that we understand now. It's instructing us about what happened to them, and it, that's why it says serpent. That's why it says destroyer. That's why it says all this, so that it's so we understand. And the end times, okay, well, we don't want Satan to influence us in those ways. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, Amen. but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Okay, so you can't stand on your own anyway. You need the Holy Ghost. And you need what? Like I've said before, the way of escape. And what's the way of escape? Jesus. Jesus is the way, right? Okay. Um, also, Matthew, thir uh, Matthew 6, 13 says, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from what? Evil. Um, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay. So you see that? Lead us. He doesn't say, uh, don't let us be tempted. He doesn't say, don't let us be tempted. It says, lead us not into temptation, because the temptation is going to come. But do what? Deliver us from evil. Okay, just like First John says, the evil one, right? Okay. Um, 
Okay, so yeah, they're controlling you to do it. Luke 23, 33 through 34 says, and when they were... Okay, so this is what made me think about this, okay? Um, about people being controlled and them not even know it. And it, is, it was going on in Jesus' time, okay? And we see this right here. When Jesus is being crucified, he tells us this, okay? That Satan and demons are controlling these people to to hurt him and crucify him and, and turn from him and not believe. And how much Jesus loves us, he, t he tells us this. Uh, and it says, And when they were come to the place which uh, is called Calvary, uh, there they crucified him, and the malefactors, one on the right hand and, and the other on the left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Okay, now I always thought about that, and I was like, well, they know exactly what they're doing. <laughs> you know, they're they're killing him they're crucifying him you know that's what they want to do they're beating him they're you know stabbing him they're scrooging him they're they're spitting on him and pulling his beard out and you know all kinds of terrible things they know what they're doing and i was thinking why is he saying that they know not what they do is he saying they don't understand that that i'm the son of god no because he told them that right you know and then they they some of them realize it in different times and then when i was thinking about it i was like that's what he's saying he's saying father forgive them for they know not what they do they don't know what they do because satan the god of this world is blinding their minds to what they are doing Satan is controlling them to do what they're doing through him and demonic influence for them to do this. You see that? Okay. And they uh, parted his raiment and cast lots. Okay, so you see that? Okay, that's what he's talking about there. He said, Father, forgive them for not knowing what they do. Same thing with Stephen. Stephen says the same thing. Okay, and they get angrier. They even get more angrier. Paul's holding the clothes. Saul, Paul's holding the clothes there. He don't know what he's doing because he's being influenced by Satan. They they don't know what they're doing, okay? And so that's the same thing Stephen said. It was very interesting, you know, and they got even madder when he said it. When he saw the heavens open and he saw Christ and God the Father and all that, they got it. And he said that they got even angrier and stoned him to death completely, right? Okay, so you see that? Okay, um, only Jesus and God can save us from this, from this demonic, satanic influence. Only Jesus and God and the Holy Ghost can save us. And that's what I was saying earlier. And we can also see that in um, John John 17, uh, 9 through 15 says this. Pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me. And the world, like I've talked about before, is what? Satan, the cube, the matrix. All of it is the world. Okay, it, Satan is the world and his influence and his system and all that. For they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one, Amen. as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name, those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost, Amen. but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. See, that's why I also think that Judas didn't believe, because he was the son of perdition. He was like a foreshadowing of the Antichrist, right? Um, the son of destruction, the son of uh, uh, hell, bound for hell. Um, you know, perdition can mean different things, sinful, iniquity. So he's like, I don't think that he believed, and that was his role to play. And then I believe probably afterwards, that's why he killed himself, though, when he began. That's why I think that after the resurrection, all that stuff, that's why he threw the silver back and he because he'd started to believe after the fact. And then he went and killed himself because he felt so horrible about what he did. And now come I to thee. And these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled Hallelujah. in themselves. Joy. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, Amen. even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Okay, so you keep us from the evil, right? So he, that's what he's saying. He keep them from the wicked one. Keep them from the evil one and his influences and his possessions. That's what he's saying here. He's like, you know, I don't pray that you take them out of the world. Just keep them away from him. You know, that they're not led into that. You see that? It makes complete sense. Okay, so uh, to end it, uh, uh, 1 John 4.4 4 says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Okay, so 
greater is the Holy Ghost, Jesus, and the Father that's in us than, you know, Satan who is in the world who tries to influence you and possess you, right? Okay. I hope y'all understood that. <laughs> uh, thank you guys. Uh, Wake and watch for Yeshua. God is love and I love God. Amen.